thank you very much for all what you do. Thank you very much for developing the theory of Bible codes. Uh, my talk will be about combinatorial group theory and homotopy theory, about different connections between these two areas. Homotopy groups of spheres. One of the most mysterious subjects in mathematics. So we know that they are very natural, they are given by nature. And uh, from the group theoretical point of view, all of them are very simple. Almost all of them are finite groups, finite abelian groups. There are so-called hope dimensions where homotopy groups of spheres are Z plus finite abelian. But uh, we don't know how to compute them. So uh, my main, uh, the main goal of this talk to give a combinatorial description of homotopy groups of spheres. <laughs> it sounds very ambitious, right? And uh, I will explain what do I mean by combinatorial description. Uh, the result is the following. This is a joint result with GU. For all n greater than k greater than 3, we construct a group, finitely generated group, given by explicit generators and relators, such that its center isomorphic to the nth homotopy group of k-dimensional sphere. So, <laughs> uh, in the sense of uh, combinatorial group theory, we can say that this is a combinatorial description. It's interesting that we're not able to give a description of this small group in terms of generators and relators. We give a description of some bigger group such that its center is exactly what we need. No, it's fine. Is it fine to present it or not? Uh, okay, very nice question. So, uh, in general, not. But we have results, some but very... Is it recursively presented? Or hmm? so is it then at least recursively presented? Yes, yes, yes. You will see. So, uh, I will give a complete presentation of this group at the end of my talk. So, uh, yeah, very initial question. Can we construct a finitely presented group? I think, yes, we can, but some more work is needed. And it is done for two-dimensional sphere. For two-dimensional sphere, we can construct a finitely presented group with such property. And uh, for uh, some more spaces, uh, w w we can do it. For example, let's take a finite abelian group. Take uh, classifying space, K1, and suspension. Then, uh, for any number N, we can construct a group given by explicit generators and relators, which is finitely presented, such that this homotopy group is exactly the center of finitely presented group. Computation of homotopy groups of such spaces is much more complicated than homotopy groups of spheres. You can take simplest example of Z2 group of uh, with two elements. Then here we will get Pn of suspension over Rp infinity. Homotopy groups are known only up to degree 6. And the 6th one was computed uh, by computers. So uh, in some cases we can construct finely presented examples. Uh, in general, this result can be extended also for uh, for finite complexes. For example, for uh, for Moore spaces, for Z2 Moore spaces, suspensions over RP2, and so on. Um, and you will see uh, how to construct such uh, such groups. These groups will be given as a certain quotients of free product of two copies of pure break groups on n strands. 
So this is a pure break group on n strands. So w we can pick a break group on n strands and uh, natural quotient, natural epimorphic image onto a permutation group. And the kernel is pure break group on n strands. Uh, pure break groups have n times n minus 1 divided by 2 generators. So here we have exactly n times n minus 1 generator. And here will be some quotient of this group. And this will be exactly our group G and K. OK? The construction will be given at the end of the talk. Now, uh, let me start with some elementary uh, group and group ring theory. Let's take a group G and uh, its integral group ring and take some two sided ideal. in our group. Uh, then we can define so-called generalized dimension subgroup determined by this ideal. <coughs> it consists of elements such that G minus 1 lives in this ideal. Since we consider two-sided ideal, this is a normal subgroup in our group G. Okay. And we come to a very natural question, given an ideal, how to describe a normal subgroup determined by this ideal. So the most n mm, natural example is to consider powers of augmentation ideals. Uh, by definition, the nth classical dimension subgroup is exactly subgroup determined by powers of augmentation ideal. So. We have augmentation ideal, we have its square, and so on. We have powers. <coughs> and it's very easy to show that lower central series of our group G uh, lie inside dimension series. So for all n. Lower central series, as you know, they are defined uh, inductively as a commutator subgroups generated by the previous term and whole group G. And, uh, for example, if we take a free group, F, then they coincide. And moreover, if we take arbitrary group, G, they coincide up to degree 4. And it was an open problem. Is it true in general that for any group, uh, lower central series are the same as dimension series? And uh, as all we know, the first example was constructed by Ilya uh, at the end of 80s. He constructed a finite, huh? oh, 60s, 60s, sorry, uh, 60s, <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, at the end uh, of 60s. Uh, he constructed a group of order two. 38 such that d4 is not equal to gamma 4. So, and this was a starting point of all this dimension subgroup theory. As I understand from Tahara's uh, paper, this is the smallest order of, uh, of possible counterexample <laughs> to dimension subgroup conjecture. So, this is the most optimal, <laughs> optimal construction. So, uh, as you see, Already in a classical situation, it's not so easy to construct a counterexample. But I when we take some more complicated uh, ideal in group ring, then the situation becomes more and more complicated. Now, let's consider the following question. We, we take a free group, F. Uh, it's group ring. Take some normal subgroup R of F. Z group. Huh? Z group. Z. Z. This is a integral group ring over F. Group ring over free group, free group. F is a free. Free group? What is the ring? Uh, group ring. Group of power correspondence. Yeah. Not Z, what is Yeah, over Z, yeah. Right. 
and consider some ideal generated by this no, no, this is not augmentation ideal uh, of, of this group. This is a uh, ideal generated by uh, by this normal subgroup. Maybe it's better to write uh, nothing this way. Okay, it's clear from from this notation. Now, let us ask, for example, what we can say about normal subgroup determined by. Not this, like this, by this ideal. And it turns out that it's very easy. It's very easy to describe this. This is exactly commutator subgroup of this group R, of this subgroup R. And this is the same as uh, if, if we change F here by, by R, this will determine a, a exactly the same normal subgroup. Now, when we take the classical dimension subgroup, this is the same as the third term of lower central series. Now, let's take some of these ideals and try to determine the subgroup which is uh, uh, defined by uh, this more complicated ideal. We have an obvious subgroup which lives here. This is a just a, uh, these two normal subgroups take their, uh, take the normal subgroup generated by them. They live here. So we have something complicated and take a quotient by obvious, obvious <coughs> thing, right? And it turns out that this quotient is non-trivial. And this quotient depends only on group G, which is a quotient of F by R. And there is a nice canonical description. This is the first derived functor of symmetric square applied to G abelianized. First derived functor in the sense of dirt puppy, in the sense of uh, non-additive derived functors. So mm, one structure, which we see in homotopy theory, appears here in, a, in some unexpected way. Let us... Uh, generalize this situation to the next degree. Could you repeat what did you say? Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay. From which point? The last one. Just ah. Because you said very rapidly. And ah, okay, okay. This is the first... <laughs> okay, okay. First derived functor of symmetric square. Symmetric square is not additive functor. Mm -hmm. So we need some generalized theory of uh, derived functors. And such theory was uh, built by Dolph and Puppe in 60s. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, derived functors of non-additive functors, they appear in homotopy theory, in unstable homotopy theory. And we have such identification where G <coughs> is a quotient of F by R. Oh. Okay. Now we can generalize the theory to uh, next degree let's take fourth power for example here we'll get fourth and here we have uh, let's take square we'll have this situation right very obvious part which lives here and this quotient and it turns out that the result will be the, f the second derived functor of super leak cube applied to G Belenized. Super leak cube is some uh, kind of very natural cubical functor which also appears, for example, in the six homotopy group of two dimensional Moore space. This I want to demonstrate that actually there is some connection at, at this moment between theory of group rings and uh, between. Uh, 
uh, homotopical algebra. Can you, can you put it in words why? Huh? In plain words, mm. why there is a pandemic? I will try, actually, during, uh, during this talk. I will try, yeah. Okay, now we consider the following situation. It seems f for a moment that we don't have any relations with homotopy groups of spheres, right? Okay. Let us take uh, our free group and <coughs> n normal subgroups. <coughs> For these n normal subgroups, we can form ideals. Ideals in group ring. Now, take a symmetric product of these ideals. It means sum over all <coughs> permutations of products o of these ideals. Our group is non commutative, so we must take all possible products of them. Okay. And this is a very natural question. What is a normal subgroup determined by this, this complicated ideal in our free group? How can we present it in terms of uh, these normal subgroups? Right? And again, we have some obvious part which lives here always which doesn't depend on the structure of uh, normal subgroups which, which we consider. How to define? We define symmetric commutator. Symmetric commutator product of normal subgroups. This is a product, again, over all permutations of such A commutator subgroup generated by all these normal subgroups. Here we use a left normalized notation. So it means we take brackets from the left and so on. Okay. It's very easy to show that for any choice of normal subgroups, this lives here. And it's a natural question. Is it true that it is exactly this uh, dimension subgroup determined by this symmetric ideal is exactly this uh, symmetric commutator subgroup. And I can say yes for, it, uh, for two normal subgroups. This is true. And for three normal subgroups, I don't know. We will start from four. And consider one very particular example. Consider free group of uh, rank N with a basis from one to N. And the normal subgroups uh, which are defined in a very natural way, just normal closures of generators. And one more. The n plus first subgroup is a product, is a normal closure of a single generator, which is a product of, uh, of generators in this uh, order. Okay. So we can uh, form a such a quotient clearly symmetric commutator subgroup lives here and we can take a quotient and here we can do the same with uh, with ideals in group ring and consider map between them just a very natural map. And of course, there is a question why uh, uh, it is well defined, but maybe it is not a homomorphism, right? It's not clear why it is a homomorphism. 
why do we have product goes to product just or product goes to sum and so on uh, in this particular case this is a billion group this is easy to show and in this particular case this is a homomorphism and in terms, uh, it turns out that uh, this quotient is exactly the n plus first homotopy group of a two-dimensional sphere, which is the same as n's homotopy group of loops of a two-dimensional sphere. And this is the same as n's homology of loops of a two-dimensional sphere. And this is exactly Hurevich homomorphism, which we know from homotopy theory. So oh, this is our uh, this is the result of GWU and um, this is uh, our result with GWU and, and PASI. So we can realize uh, Horevich homomorphism combinatorially in this way. Now let's look at the kernel kernel of this map. Kernel of this map will be exactly dimension subgroup determined by this ideal modulo. Oh, uh, n plus 1, n plus 1. Modular symmet symmetric commutator subgroup. Now we know how to compute this thing. There is, uh, this is well, a uh, very well-known theory of homology of uh, loops over connected, uh, connected spaces. This is Z in all dimensions. But this group is finite from degree 4. So for n but from 3, this group is finite abelian. And this is a zero map. So we see that this quotient is non trivial in all, uh, I wrote it in uh, abelian notation. It is non trivial in all degrees when we know, uh, where we know that homotopy groups of two dimensional sphere are non trivial. And uh, this is known in this situation for n not equal to 0 modulo 8. So in this situation, we see that dimension subgroup determined by this uh, ideal is not the same as uh, this uh, symmetric commutator subgroup. And for 2 and 3 in this situation, they're the same. Starting from four, they're, they're different. Okay. So the proof uses, of course, the uh, uh, result of SER. The proof uses uh, result of uh, Dolt Tom and this correspondence. But maybe it is obvious combinatorially. Who knows? Maybe we can prove it directly using combinatorial group theory without all this homotopy. Who knows? Right? Let me uh, show you very quickly that it's not so easy. So we have this nice description of homotopy groups over a two-dimensional sphere uh, in terms of free group. So let's try to recognize uh, generators of homotopy groups of two-dimensional sphere in, in the language of free group of, on, on n generators. Okay. So for two-dimensional sphere, we know that pi 3 is z, pi 4 is z2. Pi 5 is Z2, Pi 6 is Z12, Pi 7 is Z2, Pi 8 is Z2, Pi 9 is Z3, and uh, we know them up to degree approximately 50, and that's all. Okay. So, this identification gives us some uh, possibility, actually, to uh, recognize these elements as elements of a free group and to work with them uh, using purely combinatorial group theory, right? Okay, let's try to do it. We take a free group on two generators and uh, it's uh, we construct three normal subgroups And it's very easy to show that commutator 
of these two generators, it lives inside intersection of three normal subgroups, but it not, does not lie in a symmetric commutator subgroup. I, in this case, this intersection is just a second term of lower central series of a free group of rank 2. And uh, this symmetric commutator is exactly a uh, subterm of lower central series. So, and uh, this quotient is exactly gamma 2 modulo gamma 3. This is Z. So, we get a classical result of Hopf using uh, th this identification. Now, let's do the next step. Here we consider R1, R2, R3, R4 for normal subgroups. And now uh, the construction of this element is much more tricky. <coughs> so in this case, it's clearly that this commutator l uh, lives in the first and the second. When we take a quotient by X3, these two brackets can be identified, Th this is trivial, and when we take a quotient by x1 times x2 times x3, this becomes x1 minus 1, so this commutator vanishes, right? So it follows that it lives inside intersection of four normal subgroups, but does not, and this must be proved, of course, that it doesn't live here, and uh, it, it can be done combinatorially, but uh, already this is a non-trivial exercise. For next degree, we have four generators, we have five normal subgroups, and uh, of course we can uh, repeat this process, right? We can do it in a very natural way. Take this commutator. Take the previous commutator and commutator with uh, a similar commutator, what, but we add one more symbol at the end. Yes, again, we have a property that this uh, leaps inside intersection of five normal subgroups, clearly by the same reason. And we know already <laughs> this thing, I don't know how to put, uh, uh, prove uh, using combinatorial group theory from homotopy, we know that it doesn't lie in uh, in this fifth symmetric commutator. Let's do one more step. We get commutator of weight 16. Okay. This will live inside intersection of six normal subgroups, but not in symmetric commutator. Okay, let's do one more step. Okay, we can continue uh, today. You have to know that it has all the 12, right? Huh? Yes, 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 right. So, so uh, n not this. Maybe some power, uh, so it gives some power. And uh, actually, it, uh, it has order 2, not 12. So, next degree, when we write commutator of weight 32, Unexpectedly, we have this situation that it lives inside seventh <coughs> symmetric commutator subgroup. So, and uh, very strange situation, right? We have uh, some naturally defined normal subgroups. We have uh, naturally defined commutators, and uh, up to degree seven, uh, everything is okay. Starting from degree seven, of course, uh, they are trivial. And this is a group theoretical interpretation of a well-known Nishida nil potency theorem. That if we take seven-dimensional sphere, send it to six-dimensional, five-dimensional, four-dimensional, three-dimensional, two-dimensional sphere, then the composition is zero homotopical. From six-dimensional sphere, we can do it. Okay, from seven-dimensional sphere, we, we cannot. So uh, here you see some connection. So this is a statement about commutator uh, of length 32, and very strange statement, because uh, we see some law before, and uh, starting from degree 7, it doesn't work. Okay, so this is the illustration that uh, generators here 
uh, they're complicated. Ah. No generator. This is not generator. This is element of order two only. I don't know. Actually, uh, the generator of three torsion it is presented as a product of six commutators of like length six. Yeah. So this uh, more or less I understand its structure. I understand the structure in Lie algebra when we consider the corresponding equation in Lie <coughs> algebra. Then I can write a generator o of three torsion. Uh, in free group also probably it's possible some conjugations <coughs> will appear, but it will be uh, compl complicated. Yeah. Generated of uh, four torsion, I don't know <laughs> how to write. <laughs> Only generator of, of two torsion in a combinatorial way. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but uh, in Lie algebra, I, I can write all of them in all degrees, in all dimensions. Because or Lie algebra, if we consider the same equation not for free group, but for free Lie algebra, here we will uh, get the first uh, list of uh, unstable atom spectral sequence and we know how to compute it, and we know how to write it combinatorially. So this question for Lie algebras can be solved completely. <coughs> okay, now let me start uh, my main construction. So this is just an um, illustration that generators here are complicated. How can you analyze this map? This is not so easy. But uh, from the point of view of, combinator uh, of homotopy theory, you can get such kind of results uh, without any problem. Okay, now let us do the following. <coughs> we take our amalgamation, uh, our free product of two copies uh, of pure braids on n strands. Okay. So we know how to draw them. We know how to work them. Uh, these are very nice groups. They're of uh, cohomolo uh, finite cohomological lengths. We know how to compute their hom homology cohomology. Uh, we know many things how to uh, construct their classifying space and so on. Uh, now, suppose we have here a family of uh, two indexed uh, by index subgroups. We define some two dimensional analog of symmetric commutator now. This is a product of such um, commutators which have the following properties. This collection of numbers I1, G1, and so on, IK, GK, is such that all numbers from 1 to n appear here at least once. This is the first property. And the second property is the following, that this is a minimal collection uh, with such a property. It means that when we take, uh, when we delete some pair from, from here, then first property will be not satisfied. Okay? Clearly, there are only finitely many of such collections. We can write all of them. And here, what we do for this group, we take uh, standard generators. Yes. take standard generators of pure Bray groups on n strands. They're numerated by a, I, I, j. 
they are of this type, okay? And take a normal subgroup generated by these generators and their copies in the second copy, a copy of uh, your break group on n strength. So these are normal subgroups which uh, live in Pn star Pn. Okay? It's a very natural structure from the point of view of uh, pure braids. And here we take a quotient by this symmetric commutator. So what do you think is the center of this group? The center of this group is trivial, actually, of this quotient. So we need a little bit more. We will add some more relations here. To, uh, to get exactly the end homotopy group of uh, k-dimensional sphere. Oh, it's trivial. Hmm? Ah, it, it is z, it is z, it is z, of course, yes, right, it is z, of course. And here we have a free product, of course, it is trivial. Yes. Okay, now let me recall one construction from simplicial group theory. When we take pure group on two strands, this is just Z. We have only one generator. Pure group on three strands is more complicated. It has three generators, but actually it is F2 uh, times Z. But here we have a three homomorphisms which go in this way and two homomorphisms which go in this way. Three homomorphisms are just deleting of strands. So we can delete first, second, or the, or the thir third strand. And so on, actually. We can uh, continue this process, get four strand bra braids. We can delete strands here. And here we consider a process of doubling. Let me illustrate it here. We, we have a braid. We double the first strand in this way, or we can double the second in this way. So, and this can be done for any braid. We take tubular neighborhoods of uh, strands and take uh, doublings inside it, and so on. What we get here is not only a mm, collection of groups. But these uh, collection of homomorphisms, uh, they define so-called simplicial group. And uh, from the point of view of homotopy, this is contractible simplicial group. So we can take its geometric realization, it will be contractible. Now, let us consider only uh, cablings of this braid. It means we take a generator here and take all images under these arrows. So here we have one generator, here we have two. At the next degree, we have exactly three braids, which are constructed as, as, uh, as a cabling of initial one. Not four, but three. Let me show you. This is one. This is the second one, and the third one will be like that. That's all. At, at every degree, we have exactly uh, n braids of, of a cabling type which live in Pn plus first uh, pure braid group. Okay. For example, these things, they live here, they live here, this lives here. Now consider a subgroup generated by them. And there is a very n nice fact, uh, this is a theorem of uh, Fred Cohen and Jiu, that they generate a free subgroup. So we don't have any relations in, inside the pure break groups uh, between, uh, between such cablings. So uh, we have a free group. Let us denote generators by x1, xn inside pure group on 
and plus one strand. So we number, <coughs> we make an order between these generators in some way. Okay? And these generators are cablings of initial braid. Now what we do is the following. Uh, since we start with uh, our k-dimensional sphere, we consider p k minus one and a free group of rank k minus two, where generators are given as uh, cablings. Okay. Now we take the following uh, strange commutator x1, x1, x2 inverse, x2, x3 inverse, and so on, xk minus 3, xk minus 2 inverse, xk minus 2. This is our element alpha, which gives us some, some very, very, very complicated braid. Now for this braid, we again can do cablings. For any braid in k minus one strand, we can make finite number of uh, cablings to make it uh, uh, n-stranded. So we take all possible tubular neighborhoods at uh, all possible doublings and so on. We get. some finite number of, of braids which will live in pi n. Okay. A very complicated nature. But all of them can be written, of course, all this process of cabling can be written in terms of generators uh, very easily. It's a very simple homomorphisms. Now what we do next here we take these braids in the first copy and identify them with the same braids in the second copy. Okay, we make identification of mm, such a families of ele elements in two copies of pure braid groups. And this is a <laughs> final result. This is a group such that its center is exactly an homotopy group of k-dimensional sphere. <laughs> Such a strange con uh, construction, but uh, so this is our uh, our main main construction. Okay. What are these beta i functions? Huh? What are these beta i functions? Beta i. We take all possible cablings of of our alpha. We, we have only finitely many of them. And we just denote them in, in this way. How many? About uh, binomial coefficient f uh, um, n by k minus 1. n is bigger than k minus 1. n is bigger than k minus 1. Yeah, 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 because uh, we start with homotopy groups of, of, of spheres, yes, for uh, n must be bigger than, than k. Yeah. So w we have this, uh, this description. Now let me explain. Huh? No. Actually, there was only one of of G U, but there was a uh, interpretation of homotopy groups of two-dimensional sphere uh, using uh, Brunian braids on on two-dimensional sphere. Uh, this is not a combinatorial description, but we cannot compare it here uh, with the description of two-dimensional sphere. So. This is different, completely different. And the reason that we, we cannot extend uh, the result of GU to higher dimension immediately, uh, because uh, Milner's construction for high dimensional spheres I is extremely complicated. So I can explain how we did it here. What is, <laughs> what is the main trick here? Okay. We took uh, two copies of. Uh, Simplicial, pure braid simplicial groups. We embedded so called C 
simplicial Milnard's construction, which uh, has a homotopy type of loops over two-dimensional sphere. Its homotopy groups are. Uh, this, three dot, this, this, three groups, what are they? Uh, mm? This? No, yeah, yeah this is a simplicial group. This is a collection. Uh, here is a simplicial, pure braid simplicial group. All collection is, is a simplicial group. Simplicial group is a collection of groups connected by, uh, by some homomorphisms. And it is contractible as a, as a topological space. When we consider its uh, geometric realization, it is contractible. But it contains so-called Milner's construction, which gives a homotopy type of loops over two-dimensional sphere. And this embedding is given exactly by cabling here. Now we, take, uh, we consider this diagram and we consider so-called homotopy push-out here. We just take, uh, we uh, take amalgamation here. Homotopy push-out at the level of combinatorial group theory. What is this f of s1? f of s1 is uh, Milner's construction. This is a on, s1? on s1, on s1, yes. So you simplicial groups, right, right, right. And homotopy uh, push out in the category of simplicial groups is just uh, amalgamation of, uh, of corresponding simplicial groups. It's a type of white heat theorem written uh, combinatorially. So here we can identify this our group inside. Okay. Now we can embed higher Milner's construction inside this group. For that, we choose some any cycle. We, uh, we uh, could do it with any other cycle, just, for example, permute here elements. So the result will be the same. Take embedding into contractible space and take uh, identification of the image of, of that embedding. So we know from uh, homotopy theory wha what, do, uh, what do we have when we take homotopy push out of embedding into contractible space. We have loops over suspension. Right, and this is exactly the trick how we can uh, how we can get more and more mm, higher and higher dimensional spheres in this way. So this identification is exactly identification in the homotopy pushout, and this symmetric commutator is exactly uh, it defines simplicial boundaries in in a free product of these two contractible uh, simplicial groups. So th uh, this is a reason how, how it works. Okay, thank you.